Me? I, I, it's not real yet. I'm, mm. I'm a bit in denial. Mm. Um, I'm hoping for justice. That's why I'm trying to switch myself into that mode to try to find some justice. Yeah, I just, um, I just know my sister, she was a hard worker and um, just sitting in my bed and crying myself to sleep isn't mm. gonna do her any justice. And that's not what she'd want me to do. She'd yeah. want me to stay active and, uh, and doing what I can to spread her message and hope that we can find this suspect or suspects. And that's how I feel. Yeah, I would say, I think that obviously this is extremely personal for us and we treated it that way from the very get-go. Um, I know how valuable those first 48, 72 hours are. Um, and I can only hope that the police also know how valuable that is and that they have a lot of information there that just isn't public right now. Um, I will say the one lingering frustration I have is the timeline. Um, I know it's semantics, but my sisters got home at 156. It wasn't 145. I know it might not seem significant, but when camera, when we're looking for dash footage, when we're looking for any of those things, I do feel it, it is valuable. And they did get home at 156. It was not 145. On speculation, uh, my daughter was very popular. It seemed like everyone that I talked to said she knew everyone. Um, they had parties. They were college kids. They were about to graduate. So that somebody could have partied in the house and got an idea or got the confidence to pull that off. Yeah, it seems to be knocked down. Um, obviously, any of that information would be new to us as well. Kaylee FaceTimed me. She didn't call or text. She FaceTimed me for literally hours, almost every single day. And she was extremely cautious. She was very vigilant. Um, I think that she really would have noticed something and she, she would have said it to us. She wasn't, you know, scared to get us involved in her life in any capacity like that. <clears throat> I'm not getting anything. They're not sharing much with me. I know that there's a separation in duties there. They do have the FBI now, so I don't know how much the individuals that I'm talking with, which are the local, are actually exercising their different jurisdictions. I think they might not know a lot because, you know, they have briefings, and if they haven't had a briefing, they probably don't know exactly what's going on. To be honest, they're not. I mean, mm -hmm. I... Yesterday, I asked about the stalker question, and they couldn't confirm anything. And then today, I hear that they're reaching out to the, the community saying that there's a stalker involved. So I don't know what to make of that. It's, they're, they're just so vague with everything that they say. And then they, like, slowly peel it back layer, layer, until you, like, find the real story. It all started with uh, sharp-edged weapon use and telling the community that a sharp-edged weapon was used instead of just coming out and telling us that it was a knife from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the purposeness of being so big. You're not holding the integrity of the case together by not telling anybody anything. Well, they expanded it and um, there was volunteers that walked around and they disclosed that they were looking and found different things. So, you know, they did share with me that that may have more to do with uh, keeping cameras out than it actually does with evidence gathering. So I, I hope that that is indeed the case. It'd be pretty disheartening a week later to, to yeah. know that they didn't have the right claims. No, I, I would say for us that we, we did hear those rumors, but right now we can only leave it at that. Um, none of that has ever been confirmed to us. We have not spoke with the roommates. Yeah. The surviving roommates, they, um, and they were downstairs just to clarify that for you. I've been told it's one, but then again, there's the, the vagueness. Like it's like purposely vague, I'm hoping, but it mm -hmm. confuses everyone because nobody knows what that really means. Maybe somebody had a, a, a different kind of attack footprint. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, that's, I, I feel like we just want some more, we all want to play a part in helping. We can't play a part if we don't have any real financial information to work from. They won't confirm who that was to us. Please, that is. There's the rumor that that's the case, but it's yep, just a yeah. rumor at this point. Mm -hmm. like tons yeah. and tons of rumors, but nothing from the police. And I'll so say I think it. a lot of those rumors do stem from all of the vagueness, and yeah. it's human mm -hmm. nature to want answers. It's human nature to kind of put forth a theory so that it can you can even comprehend it in your brain. Mm. Um, and so I think that's how we're getting all of some of these really, really off-the-wall theories and some of these theories like Kaylee have a stalker that even we're sitting here scratching our heads saying, 
no, you know, it, it couldn't be. If, if it was, it would be news to us. No, um, I, I don't personally think so, because I think that there's the entire rest of the world that's also not on that list of people who have been cleared, right. um, including Maddie's boyfriend, including any associates of Xana or Ethan that might not be involved. Um, I, I don't find that significant at all. At, at any time, yeah, <laughs> multiple times until I would pick up at 3 a.m. and be like, Kaylee, what? <laughs> you know. And some of the last footage of her at that food court, she's on her phone 24 7 filming the whole thing. So she was that phone. So not only is that, that's just not a matter of opinion, that's a matter of fact. If you look yeah. statistically at homicide cases, those first 10 days are so incredibly important in finding yeah. a suspect. They determine almost yeah. nine out of ten times, I believe it was, if you'll find a suspect. So, yeah, that's not very encouraging to hear that they want to cast this wide net of suspects now. And people we know have no involvement.